Hey, what is going on you guys? In this video, we are going to be going over a piano chord progression used in a lo-fi hip-hop track using the classic 2-5-1 chord progression. So, I wanted to do a video about this topic because for a lot of people, learning how to play jazz on the piano can be very intimidating, and a lot of times it's very hard to know where exactly to begin. The 2-5-1 is a very classic progression, and the numbers that I'm saying actually refer to a type of chord movement. So if you don't recognize what 2-5-1 means, we should actually start there. So here we have our C major scale. Now simply put, each one of those notes of the scale can get its own chord. And as a shorthand, we can actually use a number to describe each one of those chords. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then back to 1. And in jazz, typically the chords are usually having more intervals. So in other words, you could take those very chords and make them four notes per chord. So now we have a C major seven, D minor becomes D minor seven, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one. So the two, five, one is referring to the chord progression. So what we're gonna do is start with the two, five, one as a chord progression in the left hand. So we're gonna play it using four note chords like we just did with that sequence. Starting there with the left hand, pinky, ring, index, thumb. You can use different fingers obviously if it's more comfortable for your hand, but that's what I use. This is obviously the two chord. If one is C major in the key of C major, two, is D minor seven. Then we're going to the five chord. Now this is gonna use a special voicing for the five chord where you don't have to necessarily jump up to the G seven chord. And we're also gonna create some alterations in that chord to make it sound a little bit hipper. So again, the D minor seven. The next chord sounds like this. Now this is gonna sound pretty dissonant, and oftentimes the five chord is a dissonant chord. And what we've done with this is we've altered it by adding on a flat nine, which is the A flat. We're also not playing the G in the bass. The lowest note is actually the perfect fifth. So this is an inversion of the chord with an alteration applied to it. And this adds a little extra bit of tension, which is very nicely released away when we go and revert back to the one chord at the bottom right here. C major seven. So the three chords in sequence with the left hand. In the right hand, we're talking about melody. Specifically what I'm playing in this example is using a couple different techniques, but the primary thing you wanna focus on is not necessarily memorizing each one of the notes, unless you want to, but really looking at what the melody is doing in relationship to the chords. The right hand starts with A and C, which essentially is part of that D minor seven chord. I'm essentially doing this kind of lick where I keep my thumb planted on the A, and I kind of go up in intervals. So a third, a fourth, a fifth. It's kind of a neat lick that you can play along with with the chord in the left hand. And then of course we're going to the next chord and we use this line that starts on A flat. Just like that. And because we're ending on E, which is the major third of C major seven, we're sort of preparing the ear for the resolution, which of course features E as a major third. And once we reach that chord, we're gonna go and play a couple of extra notes. And then you'll notice I take my thumb and bring it down to the A. This is just a variation of the C chord, so this is C major six chord, and I'll go a, and that's the very end of the melody, is those notes. To the five chord. The one chord. The variation. So 
So the right hand, what's important is not necessarily trying to memorize the melody unless you want to, but looking at what the melody is doing. And this brings me to the last bit of my video, which I think is the most important part, which is once you've learned the chords in the left hand, applying your own unique melodies to the right hand. The difficulty of doing this when you're first learning the 2-5-1 or you're first learning about jazz, or you're first learning about how to get that cool, soulful, lo-fi hip-hop sound in your own piano playing is you don't really know where to begin. You know that chromaticism is a thing, i.e. notes that are not from the C major scale, but you're not really sure how to use them. I've kind of devised a way for you to experiment with phrasing in the right hand that's actually pretty simple to pull off, even if you're a beginner piano player. What you want to remember is that because we're in the key of C major, all of the chords that we're playing besides the alteration basically feature the white keys. And that's how you know you're in C major. So chromaticism is using the notes that are not in C major, hence the black keys. And the sound of jazz is often achieved using more chromaticism, not just relying on chiefly the scale. You can improvise in the key of C major, And you can get great phrasing out of that, but when you want to get that very hip sound, you should probably use some more chromaticism. Take your index finger, and let's start here with the right hand index finger, and play this phrase. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a six note phrase, starting with index finger and the right hand on the A flat, thumb, index, middle, ring, middle. So why did we use this phrase? Well, it's a small phrase, and it sounds really good. Swung. So you can swing these six note phrases really well together. And the truth is, you could do this at different parts of the keyboard. So not just starting with the A flat. You could also start on the A, but incorporate the B flat instead. So again, example one. Example two. And we can keep going up the scale, basically incorporating one black key into your six note phrase. And there I'm just playing some small variations of it, but you can see how I'm slowly going up the scale, only incorporating one black key at a time in each phrasing, or each group of notes, or each six note grouping, depending on how you want to improvise it. But you're sort of setting this boundary for yourself, and it really helps you improvise with the black keys incorporating into your phrasing, and things tend to make a little more sense. You're sort of dialing in the chromaticism instead of feeling like you need to make order out of chaos and not really knowing how to get that sound that's balanced. It's all about the melodic nature of your phrasing and you want to start simple when it comes to getting that chromatic sound. Another useful rule of thumb I found is that the certain notes in the chromatic aspect of the scale are stronger and easier to phrase than others. If I play this D minor seven, Almost every single time on any chord in the 2-5-1, the E-flat to E is a fantastic chromatic grace note. So here's an example. So in all those phrases, I'm using just one black key the E flat, and it just really flows well when you start a phrase with it or slightly uh, or slightly pepper it into your phrase. Um, so that's one example. Another example is the A flat, which of course we used in the original melody of the example.
So E flat and A flat are very strong. Of course, you can use all the other notes. D flat to C, also B flat to B or B flat to A. Notice how we're really focusing on semitones, half steps. And that's where you're creating these resolutions from a um, tempered or from a tension note into a note from the C major scale. And of course, you could also use G flat or F sharp to F. It's all about figuring out how to phrase these notes. And I start with the easiest ones, E flat and A flat. And then I start to use the other ones like B flat, D flat, and G flat. So hopefully this video was useful to you. Uh, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you got something out of this. We do a lot of piano tutorials on this channel as well as mixing and mastering music production and guitar. And if you're looking for free stuff to download for your own music productions, there's a link in the description to the Gumroad store where there's a bunch of free stuff to check out. Enjoy yourself. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.